Hey folks, Farm Tour Tuesday, April 11th, 2023. So uh, we got a little bit of movement going on today. Today's the day, like I said, we were moving the, last week, like I said, we're moving the feeders over into paddock number six from where they had four and five. So I'll get them moved over. Um, everybody else is staying where they're at for now. And uh, if you watched last week's or watched any of the shorts that have come up so far, you know that we, Easter has come and gone, so we scalded and scraped and whole hog barbecued that one. So when we get over to the boys, we'll be down one pig there. Um, and honestly, that was a blast. So, and it was a good test run. There were a lot of things that we learned. Like we did not get everything right. Like um, to start with, so the shot was perfect. It went right down. My stick, however, was not. It's only like the third pig I've ever stuck. Um, and the last time I stuck one was like, like six years ago. So it's been a while. Um, and so I missed the first time and the second time. I mean, he's already dead at that point, right? Like it's, you're just trying to get the extra blood out. So uh, the third one though, I got it and was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. That's what that's supposed to feel like. So that's good. Uh, biggest kicker is to, you should be able to scrape the, scrape the vertebra or hit the, at the back of the neck or hit the heart. Um, either one of those will cut that artery that you need to cut. And you'll know because a, a, it will literally be a fountain of blood, right? So first stab in, pulled the knife back out, looked, not a fountain of blood. So very clearly means I missed. Same thing with the second one was like, there's some blood, but most of it's just coming out the nose. Third one got and just blood everywhere. So then you knew you were good. But those first two cuts, because there was more than one incision, when we went to uh, eviscerate, lots of blood to have to clean out of the upper part here of the cavity. So it was definitely like a, yep, okay, got to do better on the next time. Um, our uh, hot water heater tank comes out really hot. So we have it set to 180 since we used to do the farm table dinners, and I really should just turn it down. But what that means is when it comes out of the tap, even traveling from the hot water heater, it comes out at 151. So it comes out at the temperature we need for scalding, um, which of course then, you know, you put it into a container it runs through the air and all that. So like the temperature is gonna drop. But we had filled, filled the cooler we were using as a scalding trough since he was big enough to fit and just, or small enough to fit in one of those really big coolers. Um, I filled it with some cold water and then was gonna bring it up to temp with boiling water. And I shouldn't have done that. I should have just filled it up with hot water out of the hot water heater tank and had some water boiling on the stove to bring it the rest of the way up. Um, and this works for a small one, right? If we were doing a full size hog, we really would have needed to do something different, like get a propane heater and a barrel or something, um, which we'll do this fall. Because this fall, we'll process a couple of these smaller ones as big as full size feeders. Um, and then we're actually also, like I said, we really enjoyed this even though we learned a lot of lessons. Um, we now have this whole pig barbecue thing that I built. So we're gonna go ahead and next month, we're gonna do two more. So we'll take two more of those small ones and we'll process them. One for Claire's little brother's uh, high school graduation. And the next one, either for Mother's Day or Father's Day. So yeah, it's a ton of fun. I highly recommend it. Um, also, we didn't have a torch to clean off any of the fine to fine little hairs. And I will tell you that cleaning the little hairs out of the wrinkles in their nose and face is terrible. Like you cannot get in there and scrape those. We tried, we got a lot of it, but there was just the right down in them, we were really struggling and I didn't have a torch. Well, I have an oxyacetylene torch and I was not gonna drag that thing out and, and do that. So um, that night I went and bought, cause I needed to buy a couple other things to build that um, hog pit anyways. So I, uh, I went and got one of the little propane bottle torches that you can just screw onto the camp propane bottles or the taller propane bottles. Um, got one of those, and the next morning when we split him to be able to lay it out flat, we torched all the little hairs that we missed off. So if, if I'd had a torch, it would have saved it. Because then we were trying to like shave and like pluck everything um, the day before, so that took forever. When if we would have just had a torch, I'd have just torched the hairs and we'd have been fine. But, uh, so yeah, we have a torch. Now we'll do that for the next set and the next set ought to, and now we know the deal with the water. So the next one ought to go way faster. This first one took like, to go from there and into the, from the shot to in the freezer, I think was like, we started at about 
nine. We wanted to start at eight, but then we ran into getting the water up to hot enough. So really, if you want to include the water, like when we planned to start and we're like, oh, we're good, was like eight and we didn't finish until about noon or one. Way too long to be doing a small pig. Um, yeah, way too long. It really should have taken us like an hour, two hours tops, absolute tops. Honestly, 45 minutes to an hour is what it should have taken with two of us doing it and that small of a pig. But we'll see how the next one goes. Hopefully the next one we get down to 45 minutes to an hour. That would be stellar. I'd love that. We'll see, I'll keep you guys updated. I'm editing the footage for this one. Um, there's just a lot of random stuff and there's some water on the camera from a couple spots and my bloody fingerprint tapping the buttons. So like, yeah, we'll, we'll see what footage I can, I can get out of that. I know I'll get some, so we'll get videos to you for that. But uh, yeah, enough of that. Let's go ahead and flip over and start walking around and seeing the pigs and all the green grass that is everywhere. And I just killed her. And I'm fighting. Um, and we'll go see the piglets. So, all right. So Payday is doing good. He gets the ladies. So he's just out here in this whole paddock. So he has all of this. Um, and he's gonna have this for another week. And then what'll happen next week is he's gonna go ahead and get all of these ladies. Hi, Miss Oats. Hi, Miss Oats. You wanna come up for some love? Or are you just hoping I have treats? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go back and eat before the others steal all your food. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, mama, yeah, mama. So, uh, biscuit here is, they're all still available. No one has purchased any of them. So if you are interested in them, all four of those that were available are indeed still available. We have had several people interested, um, but no one willing to fully sign on. Thought we had, thought we had one or two sold and then just kind of fell through. So, um, they are still available you can still go over and check out that video prices are still the same um you know that it's biscuit dotty oatmeal and dose so as we're walking through you can see them there's biscuit the big big black and white gal um but all three of these gals are going to go in with payday next week so next tuesday they'll all go in there with him and they'll all get bread so if you are wanting biscuit not bread you need to reach out to me before next tuesday so you got a week. Well, from whenever this thing video gets uploaded too. So you've only got that. Because <laughs> that usually takes me a couple of days to get the time to fully do that. Um, and since we're in here with him, I need to grab his feed bucket. But then we'll just go over and check out oatmeal. Oh, oatmeal and Dottie who are fighting in their trough. They have no reason to fight. It's like an eight or 10 foot long trough. Oh, also my pear tree. Thought that was a lot of fun. My apples didn't make it. I really can't see it. It's that tree cage right there though, in the center of the camera frame. It's leafing out wonderfully. So I'm super excited. It had looked a little drought stressed. The three Walmart apples we got at the same time we got that Walmart pear did not make it. Oh, also her hooves are trimming up wonderfully on the concrete here like we thought. And you know, she doesn't have, she doesn't have the concrete all the time. She has all that grass to go out into. And they're starting to get a little bit better of baby bellies and her bags almost looked like they were starting to fill up. I thought, now I'm looking at them and I don't really think so as much, but I don't know. I can definitely feel, I can feel movement in there that's not just her, like when she's just laying down. And same thing for her. She's starting to kind of balloon out you a little bit there. And that's not from weight on the thing, like that is just her bagging down i there are going to be a good deal behind they're already two weeks behind but yeah mom so hopefully it's sooner rather than later but it's looking like we're at least another two weeks out i'll, I'll obviously keep you guys updated but they are really running far behind but once they're done weaning off their piglets from whenever they're born then they can either be bred back to payday or they can go as open sows. Your call. So, all right, let's move on to Dose and her little piglets. Everyone is thoroughly zonked. <laughs> but you can, before they all get to running around, you've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. All 12. And for the most part, they're pretty chill with some intentions. 
Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It'll flop over. <laughs> yeah, is that comfortable? Oh my gosh. I love piglets. Piglets are like the best thing ever. So you may be watching this and wondering, oh, why doesn't he put more bedding in there? That bedding is really starting to break down. So anytime I have a litter that is born in this yard, that is our little concrete weaning yard, which needs a clean out, but when it gets dry, I can't, I can't scrape it out. It just, just becomes solid. So um, we're supposed to get a little bit of rain later this week. So that's when they'll get new bedding in here and when I'll be able to shovel what little bits are there at and I'll spread some hay out in the yard here too. But, um, so pigs born on concrete typically would need an iron shot, right? Because there's, they're not able to pick up iron that they need from the soil. So, <laughs> so with these guys, I like to go ahead and have let them have the comp that like composted down bedding. Um, what's your little deal, little one? Um, I like to let them have this composted bedding. So they get, you know, they get a ton of fresh bedding when she's about to fare, like before that. So that's what all this is, is it's the broke down bedding um, from the batch before and from their nest. So I let their nest break down until it is about this before we add down more um, because then they'll, all of this kind of disturbance that you see to it is that they're trying to get that iron that they need from having been born on concrete. Um, and everyone who's in here, when they're in here, like the mom gets some extra mineral. So then she's bringing it around. She's pooping out mineral. Mineral is laying in the bucket that they go and lick out of. So I have never had to give an iron shot to piglets born in this yard. And I think it's because we do this, because we let them have what is essentially dirt. Because in the winter, it's the same thing. If they're born on ice, rock, hard ground, they have the same problem, but you can take a bucket of dirt and keep it to where it's not frozen and then just dump it out by the door of their uh, A-frame and they'll nose through that and get the mineral that they need from it for that. So I'm pretty sure this is just a similar, similar system. Um, and it works. Like, I mean, I've had maybe 10 litters in this area now, in this pin, and never had a problem. So yeah, and they're going on so that was the 27th, this is the 11th, uh, and I think that was a 31 day month. So I think they're at 14 days old, 15 days old maybe. Um, yeah, and so doing doing fantastic. She's kept all 12. So every single one born has made it to two weeks old. So that is awesome. I'm super, super excited about that. Okay, all right. Let's move on to the next group, which will be uh, Red and him. Red and Copa and Tubby, and then we'll move on to the feeders. Oh, I didn't forget about her. Here is Dose, enjoying her soaked feed. So, soaked, fermented with the whey. So, yeah, they're just right around the corner. I don't want you to think I was just avoiding her. She's looking good. She's holding condition fairly well, but we are giving her a ton of extra feed. So, typically the ratio is like one pound additional per piglet to make up for it. So she gets her three and a half pounds, plus she's getting 12 pounds extra. And when you soak it, which already 12 pounds is insane. Like that's, I probably didn't need to be giving her that much, but she does slim down and you can see she kind of has, but not as bad as I think she would have if I hadn't been dumping the extra feed to her and with some whey mixed in. So she's doing pretty good. She's holding her condition better than I would have thought with 12. And she is putting out a ton of milk for him. So. Mama's doing great. Now we'll move on. Here are the boys. Doing good. Um, moving their shelter continually and running out of grass. I will say they must be getting enough from the little perennial rye and the little stuff over here. It's not enough to make me happy, but it is enough that, and you can see some damage they've done there following along those drainage tiles. The irrigation tiles that we talked about before. Um, they're getting enough that his, the one we processed, Easter, his belly was completely full of greenery. Like, solid full. So, I don't know how they're getting quite enough, especially since a lot of this is um, this stuff, which isn't, I'm blanking on the name for it right now, but it's really not 
like that edible for them. It's actually, I think, mildly toxic, but they don't really eat it, so I don't worry about it. But I need them out of here. Um, when everybody goes out to their separate places and they have, you guys have another space. Go eat out of that pan over there. Hey. Come on. Come on. Yeah, tubs. There it is. Okay, Copa, come over here. Okay, he's just gonna do that. So, anywho, well now he'll get it all to himself anyways. Um, they're eating enough that his tummy was full, but, and maybe they're also eating some of this uh, Archangel Henbit. They are, that's Archangel and Henbit is circular pattern and Archangel's opposite like this, but um, they're eating enough that his tummy was full and I have been sneaking the last, since we processed them, so not, it wouldn't have had anything to do with that, but, um, and yeah, I'm just going to go show you this because it, I've been trying to dodge it for weeks, but this is all the stuff from the kitchen reno from pulling from the ceilings. We're just tossing it out the window and then bringing a wheelbarrow around, filling the wheelbarrow and then hauling it off. So I haven't done another load out yet, but I think that's the last of it. Um, but I've been letting them out into the backyard for an hour or two every day to let them graze the backyard. But that's been since I found him with his full tummy. So I don't know. It does make me feel a little better knowing that they get more stuff because there's tons of Archangel henbit and grass, normal fescue and stuff out here for them. Um, I just worry, you know, I try to keep them from getting anywhere near this. So I stand out here with them. That's why it's only an hour or two. It's when I have something else to work on in the backyard. Um, but yeah, that's these guys. I need to keep rolling on because I'm actually running short on time today. So let's head out and move the feeders. Okay, so I ran out of time doing chores because I had to run clear to work. We're down to one vehicle because our car is in the shop right now. We hit a deer when we were in California. Um, so it's getting, it's just a minor body damage, nothing serious. So we're all good. The deer is not, but we are good. So um, getting some lovely sunset vibes because we just got home. So everybody's been fed, they're all moved. Everybody has the zoomies right now. Pigs have zoomies. Dogs all have zoomies. They're out running around free. So, yeah, let's. A couple things I wanted to show you, and then we'll wrap this out. First thing I want to show you is these are the willows we planted on the leaky weirs. So, some of them are just now starting to get some buds popping, whereas some already have serious growth. These are all ones we just planted, and that's just genetics. Like, I've got these, I can usually tell pretty well right away. If they're really popping and good growth, they tend to come from this one, the one that's got the two trunks. That one grows real fast, propagates crazy, crazy easy. The other one does not, and I attempt to not save too many sticks from the other one, but it looks like I got a couple from it. Um, Cause I wind up just mixing in. So you can see here like this little one going crazy. Whereas some of the ones next to it, barely coming off. And it, I mean, it doesn't really even go down to the size. Like these are pretty small diameter ones and they're still just barely swelling bulbs. So it just comes down to which tree I pull them off of. But yeah, there's that. Ah! This is still soggy mud, which is good, right? This is the area we wanted to trap water in. <coughs> Swallowed a bug. The dogs are pulling my cages around everywhere. These are the pawpaws that did not make it. So I unwired the trees to pull and check at the roots to see if they would sprout back up in the bases. And they're not gonna. But here are all the pigos. They are enjoying this paddock. You can see that there is plenty of grass. There's that leaky spot we've talked about before where I think a little bit of the pond leaks out and then runs in because it is always boggy through there. And then they just tromps it all. Because the fence, of course, acts like a swale, right? It traps because it is higher than the rest. So then that moisture that hits here, before it can seep through, it runs along and then they pace along the fence. So right along the fence and at the start of their shelter, which has had two bales this winter. Um, it just gets boggy. But you can see there's plenty of grass there. There is grass higher than the first couple strands on the fence there. They've got tons of grass in here. So they'll be in here for a week 
and then they're going to move over to paddock number one and then two three four and when they have four they'll get four and five same time again probably but yeah we are back to having a normal rotation now and like i said so we'll do in a couple these in a couple more weeks we'll process another one or two of these small ones uh probably not that one i'll probably go with the smallest the slowest growing ones and just go ahead and get them out of the way since they're not growing as fast as everyone else so this little gal the friendly gal and maybe tubby we might let tubby go a little longer this is other tubby two tubbies this is the friendly tubby and then this is the female tubby so there's the barrow tubby and then the female tubby and that's one of those cooney cooney throwback looking ones so all right that's that's them Oh, and you can see more of the, so these are last year's willows. These were, these are ones that were planted and grown last year. Curlies at the back of this style of leaky weir. And then this one is the two year old. And you can see these here. So these are lots and lots of pollen being kicked out by these. Tons of pollen, wonderful for bees. Uh, willows are one of the first ones to go in the spring. And they also have tons of, uh, those are the Chinese mantis egg cases. But the reason why I like doing the pollarded style on the field is then the pigs can't, they can only trim off these lower pieces that come out. They have trouble getting those, but keep in mind pollarded or coppiced, you really want to have some of those versus just some standards all over because not all of them are going to make it. And sometimes it's just the top that dies because you can see here, the bottom is sending up new growth but the odds of this this is, would essentially then be coppiced right cut down towards the ground i guess pollard it is above the three inches but it it's not gonna the pigs are gonna eat this <laughs> pigs or rabbits rabbits love this tender growth like that so i'm not real confident those will make it yeah i think folks i kind of think that hits everything we've got trees budding out all over the place um, the big willow pollards up at the house are going crazy. Those oaks buds have gotten a little bigger and I really, really need to dig them up. If I'm going to dig them up, like now I'm kind of to the point where I might have to just leave them for a year. Cause if I dig them now, I have a eh, chance that they might not make it because I'll have dug them up after buds have swollen. So like, it's not good for them. Okay. It's really not good for them. Um, but they are just grown from acorns, but they're like three years old at this point, four years old. They really need to go to a new spot because they'll, one, they're going to shade each other out, but two, they will, out in the field, with enough space, they can start producing acorns at six, seven years old. So, like, those really need to be out here. That's why we planted sawtooth oaks. So, yeah, I got to get those out here. Maybe I'll go, it's like seven or, seven forty, seven thirty something. I didn't really, I was, got other things I wanted to do this evening, but maybe I'll try to dig a couple up and throw them in a couple spots right now. But, oh, and uh, since filming, Biscuit and uh, Donut are in heat. They are, yeah, they're having fun. So, I am debating, and Payday senses it. He is pacing that fence hardcore. I was debating just going ahead and throwing him in there and letting him go ahead and get the job done earlier than I planned on. Um, but I really would like to get this video out. And uh, in case anybody wants her not bred, because if you don't, by Tuesday she'll go in. That does mean then two weeks later is when she'll finally go back into heat again so that he can breed her. But yeah, that's what it is. All right. Um, I'm going to call it an evening, at least as far as this video goes. All right. <laughs> uh, if you guys have any questions about those pigs or if you're local and you have any interest in our hole and halves, um, yeah. Hit me up. I would love to, I'm going to drive a couple of these to the show anyways, at least Copa for sure. But I would absolutely love to be able to take biscuit and oatmeal at least to the show, to be able to enter them in the show. But I'm only, probably only gonna do that if I have a buyer that wants to pick them up at the show. So, there goes a the bunny. Dogs are running it down. And it's safe. Made it out from where the dogs could get to it. So. You guys have a great rest of your week. Thank you to our Patreon supporters, Raymond and Ashley Hunter. Your guys' contributions, as always, and your support is, as always, crazy appreciated. I hope all of you have a good one.